Today, we're taking the still footage and turning it into this by recreating the conveyor belt effect. Let's jump on in. So here are a few great examples of the conveyor belt effect being used. Now, normally it is done practically by putting the camera on some rails and moving side to side. And usually there's some object, a wall or a person that's blocking that midpoint between the two different scenes, either horizontally or vertically. But what if you just have still footage? How can you recreate this effect just using post-production? So I'm going to show you a simple way of doing it inside of Premiere Pro first, and then we'll jump into a more advanced method inside of After Effects. So here in Premiere Pro, we need to make a sequence, but not just a normal sequence. We need to add more width because we're going to have more space on each side for each scene. So we have our sequence, but to make our conveyor belt effect more convincing, we need to have some parallax movement between the background, middle ground, and foreground. So to do this, we need to make sure that we have assets where our subject is separated from our background. So I'm going to open up our Envato extension here to find two green screen videos of our subject and also two background photos here to go along with them. If your shot has the subject and background together as one layer, what you can do here is mask out the subject with After Effects Roto Brush tool, and then you can use Photoshop's generative AI to fill in the space where the subject is to get your subject in the background on two separate layers. But for me, I'm just gonna drop in the footage for my first shot here and use the Ultra key to get rid of the green background. So I'm going to do the same for this second shot and also move both the subject and background to the right. The final element that will help sell this whole shot is by also adding a foreground element. So let's download this green screen camera to put in front of the first shot and another video of this dude here who will be our cameraman. But his main role here is to cover up that line between our two different scenes. For the camera video, I'm actually going to duplicate and nest our first shot here and place it in the camera screen so it looks like they're actually filming. Now that we have everything in place, we want to nest both our background layers together, same with the subjects and foreground elements. To get that parallax feel, we need each part to move at different speeds. So we'll keep the background nest still since whatever's in the back will move the least. And for our subjects, let's keyframe the position to have it move from right to left slowly. Same with the foreground, but with more distance. You can also click on motion properties to compare how far apart both keyframes are from each other to make sure our foreground actually moves further than our subjects. And if at a certain point, you see the background of one shot leaking past the foreground into the other, go into the background nest, add a mask and some keyframes to hide it behind our foreground. Back at the main sequence here, let's add blur effects to our foreground and background nest. This way we can feel the depth between each layer. Then select all three nests here and let's nest them into one final nest. Now we can change our sequence settings back to 1080p and keyframe the position of this final nest to move from one shot to the other. Now, if we hit play, you'll see the conveyor belt effect in action with some parallax. Now our shot is looking really nice and stylized, but how about we make it even cooler? Other than the stock footage and photos that I've used, I could go to Envato to grab some high quality pre-made templates. For example, like this camera animation, which is perfect for the end of my sequence. I can easily download this and just copy the effect over and place it on top of my edit. Let's add some more. How about some camera overlays to give our edit a certain vibe? And maybe after the camera flash, we can end with this cool title animation. I'm happy with this edit, but it's only 50% done without the sound. Luckily, Envato has a massive audio library. So right here, I can actually download some sound effects directly inside of Premiere Pro using their extension. And let's add to the timeline and let's check out what our edit looks like now. Yeah. 
So if you too want to access over 19 million creative assets and growing with a lifetime commercial license, by the way, you can use my link below to unlock unlimited creative assets all in one place. Thanks Envato for sponsoring this video and for supporting what we do over here at Gal. All right, buckle up. Now it's time for the advanced method. So our effect in Premiere Pro is nice, but it's not as realistic because we don't get a lot of perspective shift because it's not an actual camera moving on a track. Well, we can make it more realistic inside of After Effects. Using After Effects 3D environment, we can create a fake wall between the two shots to make it feel more realistic and create a more compelling transition. Here's how. In After Effects, we're going to make a new composition, but this time we don't need to extend the width anymore. Let's drop in the subject and background for our first and second shot into the timeline and use the key light effect to key out the green screen from our subject layers. Now you can press this icon here to make our layers 3D and then create a new camera. I'll leave the settings as is, but if you're working with your own footage, be sure to match the focal length to your actual lens. Let's change our composition window to two views. The one on the right will be set to custom view one, so I can hold option on a Mac or alt if you're on a PC and use my mouse to move around in 3D space without messing up my actual camera's position. Let's use the on-screen handles here to move our subject and background of the second shot to the side. Then let's move the background layers back in 3D space and scale it up to fit the scene. If the background isn't wide enough, what you can do is add the motion tile effect to it, bump up the output width and height, and make sure mirror edges is turned on. Now I can keyframe the camera's position to move from right to left, stopping in front of the second shot. When we hit play now, we will naturally get the parallax effect. So this time, instead of downloading a person to block our transition point, let's put our construction hat on and build us a wall. I've downloaded these two wall textures from Envato and let's drop them into the timeline and make them 3D. I'll move, rotate, and scale both these layers down in 3D space to create a wall shape between the two rooms. Make sure the front of the wall is right in front of the camera. If a certain side of the wall seems dark, make sure to change the render to classic 3D. And now your texture should look the same no matter how you rotate it. Then I'll duplicate the black wall, add a mask to make it more narrow, and place it between the two walls to cover up the gap. Since this part of the wall will pretty much be right up on the camera as it passes, I'm going to add a lumetri color effect and make this part look even darker so it's less distracting. Now the wall in the first shot looks pretty nice as is, but our wooden wall still needs some work to make the lighting match our background better. So the light seems to be coming from a window somewhere off frame. So what I'll do is add a Lumetri color effect to the wooden wall and darken the whole thing. Then I'll add a circle mask to the spot that should be affected by the light and bump up the feathering. And under Lumetri color next to compositing options, let's hit the plus icon so our color grade will only affect the mask area. So let's invert the mask and here we go. The lighting makes a lot more sense now. And when I play, as the camera moves, I can see parts of the second room's background leaking into the first one. So to fix that, just add a mask to whichever element is leaking through, and then you can keyframe it to follow the camera's movement. I also see my wooden wall leaking through as well. Let's just keyframe its opacity from 0 to 100 right when the camera gets into the second room. Now it's looking okay, but what's really gonna glue it all together is some blur. Now I could just add an adjustment layer on top of all the background layers to blur everything, but in reality, the part of the wall here that is near our subject should also be in focus. What I'll do is I'll duplicate the camera layer and pre-comp it with all our background and wall layers. Let's duplicate the pre-comp and rename the top one to depth because we'll use this layer to get all of our depth information. Next, we're going to apply the 3D channel extract effect to our depth layer. And as you can see, everything will turn into black and white depending on how close or far away it is from the camera. I can adjust these parameters to reveal different parts of our scenes, but basically what we're doing here is choosing which part will get blurred. I'll hide the top layer for now. And on the bottom layer, let's add the camera lens blur effect to it 
and an effect controls under blur map, let's choose our depth layer and the blur effect will be applied to the white areas from the depth layer only. I could also duplicate the depth layer and adjust these parameters to get the white areas to only appear on the foreground part of the wall. And back at the background layer, duplicate the blur effect and link this one to our second depth layer. And bam, we finally have a more natural looking blur. So now you know how to create some cool stylized transitions and you have a good introduction to how to use cameras inside of After Effects. If you want some more videos like this where we break down how to do specific effects, leave a comment below and let us know what effect you want us to recreate. Thanks so much for watching today's video. And as always, keep creating better video with your gal. See you next time. Bye.